Thank you and much love. Welcome back to UAP and UFO news for July 2023. So we have uh, quite a list here and there has been a lot of progress in this uh, phenomena and uh, UAP UFO news and uh, the first is the introduction and uh, today we have these facts one is the hearing on uh, UFO and UAP in the Congress 26th of July where there were three witnesses witnessing witnessing on the UFO phenomena and the main witness was Dave Grush which claims that the United States of America has UFOs and uh, extraterrestrials in their custody. Number two is the Book of Light which is finished now and there's a free version on the PDF uh, file on my uh, YouTube site and I have also 10 copies printed now in its own uh, version so this is the book it's quite big the back side I will also give away one example if I uh, can uh, get some new subscribers and I will in a month take a lottery and we will uh, choose who is going to get the free copy of the book. It's 204 pages and it's most of my work the last seven years. So it's a lot of positive information. If you want to raise in frequency and become more creative yourself and learn what extraterrestrials are, you should read this. It's, it's good knowledge. I also want to do a little bit of reclamation for Advertising for Linda Bolton's house books, you know, the kind of a monster of a book. And if you want to combine these two, you know, you get the whole package, you get the facts, you get the witnesses, and you get the spiritual side and the creativity here. So, yeah, very nice. So that's very good. And number three is the UFO video, Roswell, New Mexico, 33, 4 is Oldest Goldies, 5 is James Webb News, pictures, 3 pictures and 1 video, 6 is a channeling, and I think I know who is coming forward this time. So it's, I think it's the other medians. So, Number two, here you have the Book of Light, 204 pages, and printed in 10 copies. The printing price is 230 crowns, so I have to find out what kind of price we're going to have. I also need to have some income from it, so we can give some of it away. And uh, I'm in progress of uh, trying to get a house and trying to get a new car because it's kind of falling together or falling <laughs> the car is old and uh, yeah so I'm going to show you the book again here it is so I'm not determined the price yet but I guess it's around fifty dollars you know to take in the postage and also the production cost and uh, it's kind of seven years of work so it's very nice you know it's nice pictures and very nice uh, writings, poems, art, extraterrestrial drawings, and there is a text to all of these pictures. So most of it is channeled from higher mastery, higher masters, and some from my own higher self, you know. And. Number three is the UFO UAP hearing of uh, 26th of July 2023 
and here we have uh, three witnesses coming forward Major Dave Grush, Lieutenant Ryan Graves and Commander David Fravor. Dave Grush was a security agent for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and Lieutenant Graves and Fravor were F-18 or F-16 pilots for uh, US Air Force and US Navy. Maybe both of them were from the US Navy. And here are the videos from that Congress. Out there, George Knapp, my buddy Jeremy Cornbell. Um, I've, uh, they're not witnesses, but they've uh, provided some statements on this subject, and I seek unanimous consent to enter those statements into the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Also, I'd like to enter in, I understand now that this is unclassified and it's public record, but as we all know, that's sometimes difficult for the public to get a hold of. A report, Defense Intelligence uh, Reference Documents, Advanced Space Propulsion Based on Vacuum, Space-Time Metric Engineering, some light reading for some of our members. Without objection. Thank you. Um, Lieutenant Ryan Graves, he's the Executive Director of Americans for Safe Aerospace. Lieutenant Graves is also a former U.S. Navy F-18 pilot with his own UA UAP experience. The next witness, David Grush, is a former senior intelligence officer with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and was a senior technical advisor for UAP issues. And final, finally, retired Navy Commander, da Commander David Fravor, squadron leader who worked as a naval aviator for 18 years. Mr. Fravor has his own UAP experience known as the TikTok event. I look forward to hearing from all three of you today. Um, pursuant to committee rule 9G, the witnesses will please stand and raise their right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Let the record show that all the witnesses answered in the affirmative. You may be seated. We appreciate you all being here today and look forward to your testimony. I have several questions and I'll, I, if we can just be quick on these first two, I'm gonna ask each of you the same question um, and then I'll get to each of you individually. Uh, the first one, when you reported your experiences with a UAP, did any of you face any repercussions with your superiors, yes or no? No. No. I've actually never seen anything personally, <laughs> believe it or not, so. All right, um, and then do, do you believe there's an active disinformation campaign within our government to deny existence of UAPs, yes or no? I don't have an answer to that. As previ previously stated publicly, yes. I think previously with like Project Blue Book, yes, but currently I don't speak for the United States government. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions for Mr. Graves. Um, what percentage of UAP sightings in your belief go unreported by our pilots? This is an approximation based off of my personal experience speaking with a number of pilots, but uh, I would estimate we're somewhere near 5% reporting perhaps. So like 95% basically don't report seeing UAPs. That's just my personal estimate. Um, in the incident off Virginia Beach, do you believe the Navy took the danger to your aircraft seriously after it was reported? Absolutely. Um, a few questions for Mr. Favor. As an expert naval aviator, have you ever seen an object that looked and moved like the Tic Tac UAP? No. Did the Tic Tac UAP move in such a way that defied the laws of physics? The way we understand them, yes. Many dismiss UA UAP reports as classified weapons testing by our own government, but in your experience as a pilot, does our government typically test advanced weapon systems right next to multi-million dollar jets without informing our pilots. No, we have test ranges for that. It took over 15 years for your encounter with the Tic Tac to be declassified. Do you feel there was a good reason to prevent lawmakers from having access to this footage? No, I just think it was ignored when it happened and it just sat somewhere in a file, never got reported. In a drawer. It happens a lot up here. <laughs> Shocker. Um, Mr. Grush, uh, a couple of questions for you too, sir, this morning. Um, what percentage of UAPs do you feel are adequately investigated by the U.S. government? Of the 5% that are reported. <laughs> um, I can only speak for uh, my personal leadership over at NGA. I tried to look at every report that came through that I mm -hmm. could triage. So, 
Do you believe that officials at the highest levels of our national security apparatus have unlawfully withheld information from Congress and subverted uh, our oversight authority? There are certain elected leaders that had more information that I'm not sure what they've shared with certain Gang of Eight members or et cetera, but uh, certainly uh, I would not be surprised. Okay. You've stated that the government is in possession of potentially non-human spacecraft. Based on your experience and extensive conversations with experts, do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent extraterrestrials? Something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, so, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about mm -hmm. UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield from Eglin Air Force Base indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. Uh, we asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew and initially we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that uh, I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico, and when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, Again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side. You can go back through history of things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. 
And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar on the aircraft when it tried to do it, and the only way we could see it is passively, which is how he got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. And, and how should we think about four craft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another, um, in a diamond, I, I, in all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT FLIR system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system, and, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. It just goes to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a U of AP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people, and that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would observe that perhaps as we, uh, as we move forward from this hearing, there are some obvious next steps. Every person watching this knows that we need to meet with Mr. Grush in a secure compartmentalized facility so that we can get fulsome answers that do not put him in jeopardy and that, and that give us the information we need. Second, I would suggest that the radar images from, um, that were collected of this formation of craft out of Eglin Air Force Base, and specifically the actual image taken by the actual flight crew that we can actually validate um, be provided to the committee, subpoenaed if necessary, um, so that we're able to track how to get this type of reporting and analysis done in a more fulsome way. That would be my recommendation, humbly as a guest. Number four, James Webb News. Number one is the picture of a dust reservoir in two supernovae. And image from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope reveal large amounts of dust within supernova 2004-ET and supernova 2017-EAW. These supernova are located in spiral galaxy NGC 6946, 22 million light years away from Earth. And here you see the picture, very nice, very beautiful. James Webb has really changed our view on the universe. Picture number two. Webb celebrates first year of science with close-up birth of sun-like stars. The first adversary. anniversary image from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope displays star birth like it's never been seen before, full of detailed impressionistic texture. The subject is the Ru Opiuchi cloud complex, the closest star forming region to Earth. It is a relatively small, quiet, stellar nursery, but you never know it from Webb's chaotic close up. Yet bursting from young stars crisscross the image impacting the surrounding interstellar gas and lighting up molecular hydrogen, shown in red. Some stars display the telltale shadow of circumstellar disk, the makings of future planetary systems. Very nice, beautiful picture here, you know. Picture number three. Web snaps highly detailed infrared image of actively forming stars. Oh, my cat is coming. Known as Herbig Halo 4647 in high resolution near infrared light. Look for them at the center of the red diffraction spikes appearing as an orange white splotch. Herbig Halo 4647 is an important object to study because it is relatively young. Only a few thousand years old star systems takes millions of years to fully form. Number four. 
video of a 3D flight to 5000 galaxies, also from the James Webb telescope. Much love. Number five, all these but goldies. Enjoy it. Number six, UFO video. This video was filmed in Roswell, New Mexico on 17th of May 2003 and it shows a beautiful UFO elongated, kind of vertically hovering over Roswell in New Mexico. I don't think we need any more evidence of this, but maybe we do. Thank you.
7 is a channeling. And we will see what gets through this time. I know there was some positive vibration this time, you know. Kind of Ralph seemed to be pissed off last time. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't speculate in that. We'll just go on. Thank you, humanity, and welcome to the session of light. This one wants to bring in a unity of energies in the show, and that shows. There has been a time since we was here with our light. It's okay. Your disclosure is now happening. It is gaining momentum, it is gaining pace, it is gaining wisdom, and it is gaining facts. Your whistleblowers are now ready to line up and confess. This can't be stopped. The elites and agendas know this, and it's time to cooperate with humanity, to get the balance and to get the environment cleaned up with the new technologies coming out. And it's also important to introduce many of the extraterrestrials to your human society which has been hidden and has also been kept in a fear-like state. And it's also important to remember that your groups and agendas, we shall not name them, but they have been in a warlike tendency against many of our groups and societies of extraterrestrial origin. This is to some extent stopping because there have been losses on both sides and there is an agreement that this is to some extent unnecessary because you already have much of the technologies we possess at a lower frequency level though limited in vibration and how far you can get with these technologies because you have to raise your vibration for these technologies to fully become true to the potential and it is acknowledged and it is also known by many of your groups so they're trying to lighten up you say you can say we the Andromedians has always come here with love we has always come here to teach you and to make you aware of yourself but as this is a school we cannot reveal to ourselves or to you what we truly are and do your job for yourself so you don't learn from your incarnation experience we have been in many times before and I am Alexandra. And I hope you share my message with others. And that you share this project with the world. Because it needs to see it. Many are now awakening and showing what they truly are and their potential of love. And that is needed. Because there is a spiritual endeavor. There is a teaching here about the light and the dark and that many times planets are made and created for a learning process for your soul and your spiritual awareness. But it has gotten a little bit out of hand here. 
So we are working with many groups and federations to find a balance to the problem, to the peace project of humanity and their environmental lab of Earth, which has been seeded by many. You are entering a fourth dimensional awareness and consciousness, even up to fifth, as many as said. You are becoming wise and you are teaching and learning about love. And you are remembering who you truly are on a heightened state, on a true spiritual awareness of your super consciousness, of your higher self. We are in diplomatic engagementship with that which you call the reptilians or the draconian races, which are kind of more aggressive and hostile towards many races. But there are, of course, those which are peaceful, as with the Ambassador Rom. And there are many different groups and pirates out there from all civilizations. And there are mostly peace. But there is some kind of Star Trek gangstery going on. And there is some elements which points to a form of fiction which you call Star Trek. So it is similar but we don't use the ships which you are depicting in this series. We have more geometrical forms and shapes and creates ships and UFOs which you call them which are more in alignment with geometry and easy to manufacture. This process you already know. You already know of these processes on your earth and in your secret groups. The now main task, when you have now the knowledge about the truth about UFOs and extraterrestrials, that you have there in your possession. It is for the secrecy to end and for these technologies being made public for all so you can gain and use these technologies to clean up your biospheres and your earth for pollution and also end the oil embargo and stop using these fuels as your traveling mechanisms into your traveling devices. There are more and better and less environmental destructive options out and in here of your societies. Your groups know this to some extent and it is needed for these technologies to come out, for humanity to expand and prosper out into the cosmos and the universe. You have your groups which are traveling already around in your solar system and to different star systems, but if you are going to become a star-faring people, you need to come together and stand together and work together and becoming a voice of your own in the cosmos and have your true seat among our federation of worlds. We are from another galaxy and we travel often here to see and meet our friends from the Milky Way. Travel with spaceships and consciousness is not a problem if you know how to do it, but it needs you to be on a frequency of 
fifth dimensional or fourth dimensional awareness and leave that which is not needed anymore behind, which is of fear and anger and warlike tendencies. It will only limit yourself when you want to travel into and outwards. You all know this on another plane, another level, but here you are relearning it and reteaching yourself these things for the soul experience. I want now to say goodbye to your human pub publicum and I want to say that you are all loved and you all have the ability to contact us if you meditate, being still and seek contact on a higher frequency of love then we will answer you we will be with you and we will give you a message which you can give to the world a message of peace thank you Ema Anis Namazita Namaze Much love Thank you How much you know, better energy this time than last time at least the last time Ral seems a little bit you want to show his gangster side it's okay though know. we're dealing with different groups and we're dealing with different energies so I think it's very important to get this uh, into our encyclopedia so you can learn what we're dealing with and where they come from and you know what kind of agenda they are having what kind of technology they have but I guess this is already done thank you much love